We have been using satellite imagery to look at what's happened to the habitat of the giant panda in China. And we've done so over 40 years, a period of time where China has undergone enormous changes to its landscape. What we find is that although there are more pandas now than they were 20 years ago, those pandas are living in a landscape that has suffered a lot of important changes. China is building roads at a very high rate, and when you build roads, you, you carve up the panda habitat into, into different pieces. The reason why it's important to have habitat connections is sex. If you've got pandas here and pandas there, you don't want to find yourself that you have all your male pandas here and all your female pandas there because you might have baby pandas. So establishing connections between habitat patches is vitally important to maintaining the viability of, of the panda population. The International Union for the Conservation of Nature um, assesses whether species are at risk of extinction. And they have just decided that the giant panda has been, what we said, downgraded from being endangered to vulnerable. And that's because of the increasing numbers. Today's update also shows that the giant panda has improved and moved from being listed endangered to listed vulnerable. On the other hand, those assessments don't yet incorporate the kind of information that we can see using satellite technology. So part of what my group and I have been doing, not just on pandas, uh, but on cheetahs, on a variety of different kinds of birds around the world, a lot of different species, we're looking for sort of high-tech inputs into these assessments of whether species are uh, critically endangered, vulnerable, endangered, not endangered. So the question that people should be asking me is, are you saving species lives? And, and these assessments are one way of seeing whether we are succeeding or failing. And if so, why and how and what can we do to improve things?